Happy good evening. This is Brienne from Zenful Mindings. Um, and I know it's super late, so I don't know if anybody's actually going to be on here or not. And I apologize for the poor lighting. Um, sorry. Uh, that's my cat. Um, but I have been journaling some stuff that I really wanted to um, take a few minutes just to share. Because um, in my life, like over the past few days and week, it's been so pertinent. Um, and it kind of gained this, this new, like, oh dear, level <laughs> of clarity, um, that I found really helpful. And, uh, I was thinking about like all of the times that I question myself about things like, am I doing this well? Am I messing this up? Am I being a good mom and a good friend and a good, whatever it might be, or am I doing this right? And it's so much and it's when I get lost in those questions that like those seeds of doubt like they begin to flourish and thrive and like latch on as identities right and it's really good I think that we question ourselves and that we um <laughs> that we like do that that inner work to like figure out our motivations to figure out where we're coming from what are our boundaries what am I really looking at here? And what are my personal truths? But it's when we get too caught up in those, when we really do know the answer to those things, you know, I think that we really do know, but sometimes we don't believe the answers. We don't believe our own personal truths. And we get so caught up in the analysis that we lose sight of this much larger picture. And on the yoga mat right there, is a lot of work that goes into refining postures and um, alignments and what muscles are we using and how are we activating them and how are the bones stacked and you know what are your joints doing and there's a lot going on inside like this mental checklist and that stuff is integral and it's important to check in with it and it's important to build it over time so we get this muscle memory and this body memory but if we are spending this whole time that we're like in an asana going through that checklist instead of actually setting that down for a moment, knowing that we're where we're at right now, understanding what our truth in that moment is, we're going to lose the opportunity to experience the asana, right? We're going to experience the checklist. Um, and... I wrote down some stuff that I wanted to look at. Um, one of the things I guess like I wanted to mention is that especially when it comes to like those refinements, right? If we think about them um, in terms of the questions that we're asking, that checklist that we go through. If we're in a studio class, we can see that every body is different, right? And not everybody is aligned the same way. You know, not everybody is going to catch the cue or like understand certain words that are being said or how a shape is supporting or how your body is supporting a shape, right? And it doesn't really matter, you know, that somebody understands something differently than somebody mm -hmm. else in that context, right? As long as it's safe. As long as it's safe and we're not doing any harm. And really the same can be said for our personal truth, right? Because my personal truth, much different from yours in even the same circumstance, right? There's that thing like if we witness the same event, there's going to be different stories, right? Because our personal truths are different because our experiences are different. And it doesn't do us any good to expect us all to have the same personal truth. My other cat is here and she's really excited to lick this paper. Um, but it's about having faith enough in ourselves or building that muscle memory of faith in ourselves to understand that we already know the answer to those questions. We already know what our personal truths are. Sometimes we hesitate to look at them and sometimes we even doubt that that's what they are, but they're not this unmalleable thing, right? Personal truths can change over time. There's no rule that says they're set in concrete and that they can't ever be anything different. Your truth might change from one moment to the next, just as like your muscle memory changes, right? Things happen to our bodies. And <clears throat> for me, it was like about 
getting these like fragmented parts of myself, right? These insecurities that I had really adopted as identities and confusing the two, right? Confusing them so much that when I get lost in those questions, it's my insecurity talking, right? But I'm confusing it with identity and that doesn't fit me anymore. And I realize it doesn't fit me anymore. And that itself is this clarifying personal truth for me that it doesn't matter if somebody agrees with my personal truths or not because I'm happy living in them and they are healthy personal truths and they are things that make me better in my heart and my spirit. They make me better for my family, my friends, for the world at large and the contributions that I'm making to it in the ways that I can. And <clears throat> the idea of adapting those or adopting, <clears throat> excuse me, those insecurities <clears throat> as identities, I also think talks about, you know, how we like talk ourselves out of just a physical yoga practice. Um, it's something we were talking about in my yoga training the other day about how there are these myths, right? Like, um, my body's too big. I'm not flexible enough. I don't have the right clothes or, um, I'm not strong enough. <clears throat> And those are all like myths that we tell ourselves because they're really insecurities, right? Because there's something in a physical yoga practice for everybody and everybody, whether, you know, that's a hardcore physical practice or maybe it's breathing or sitting, you know, in a spot or trying to get the relaxation in or building up postures. There's really, I believe, my personal truth is that there's something in there for everybody, but it's about identifying those things that we're feeding with the questions, with the doubts, with the insecurity, you know, they're, we're feeding energy into that. So can we stop that? And if we're not willing to stop that, or if we're afraid to stop that, are we really seeing ourselves? Like, are we taking the time to see ourselves? And if we are not doing that or not working towards that, how can we really expect other people or yeah, expect other people to see us? and to witness us and to honor us. If we can't do that for ourselves, we cannot truly expect somebody else to be able to, right? And that's this big, I guess, ending right now because this talked about several things that <laughs> came out of my, you know, pen, I guess my, my mouthy pen as I was writing. And I hope you find some value in <laughs> it. As messy as it is, you know, life is messy and I don't know, dive into the goodness with it. This brought up some great stuff for me. I hope what I brought up brings up some great stuff for you. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Have a brilliant evening or a happy good morning when you find this. And just love on yourself a little bit and don't be afraid to look and see yourself, right? We're all there with you seeing our own selves. Happy good evening.